What is going on everybody? Welcome to the fourth part of stock price acquisition. In the last tutorial I showed you guys how to bulk pull um, the op one day open high low close data for the past year of the you know bulk of stocks however many you wanted in this case we just did seven uh, just for effect and example um, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to start pulling higher granularity data and then actually make a program that just automatically pulls um, this five minute open high low close data from Yahoo so what it'll do is just you'll just continuously run this program and it'll continuously pull data you just need to make sure this program runs at least once every five days but if you want to have you know uh, more up-to-date information you can make it run as as frequently as every five minutes though I wouldn't suggest that or at least you know maybe close it during the weekend so with that let's go ahead and hop right on in um, the first thing we're going to do is some quick housekeeping. Wherever you've saved all these files, I suggest we move them because now we have a different data. Basically, it's going to be five minutes open, high, low, close. But as I showed you guys before, it calls the date a little bit different. It's in Unix time, not, um, you know, sort of a date stamp. So anyway, what I'm going to do is just say one day OH low close. I'm going to make a little folder, and I'm just going to move all of these files into that folder. So we're not going to use those at least yet. When we go to graph, when we do the first part of the graphing, we'll use those again and we'll graph those and then later on we'll graph the uh, the uh, higher granularity data stuff. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we have stocks to pull here that we want to pull. Um, since we're going to make a program that's going to, you know, in theory run for a, an extended period of time, it's always good, you could just use time, but it's easier on the eyes to use something else, but it's always good. Python, at least for me on all the computers I've run it on, sometimes, for whatever reason, uh, be it, you know, your internet kind of glitches for a second, or the computer, I don't know, but sometimes the program will freeze. And the best way to realize it's frozen is to, every time it does something, just print out onto the screen the last time and date it did something. So if you look at it and it's been 24 hours since it's done anything, yet you, uh, you know, it's supposed to do something every hour, you know something's wrong and you need to reset it. So it's just kind of, it's just helpful. And since we're going to make a program that's going to, in theory, run all the time, um, it would be good to go ahead and, um, oops, uh, import and do what I'm going to show you. So we're, for what we're going to do, it's going to be, we're going to import date time. And this is so we can print a timestamp that we can recognize because time, the only thing it'll print for us is a Unix timestamp, and we don't want that. So uh, we'll leave stocks to pull, uh, but I think what we'll do, a lot of this stuff will be the same, but a lot of it's going to be like different. And just so we can fundamentally understand what we're doing, I think what we're going to do is actually just clear out this entire thing. We'll leave the try and accept loop at least, but just highlight everything and just delete it for now. Um, it, within the try and accept, don't do the whole file. Uh, otherwise you'll have to type all this stuff. So, um, so the first thing that we're going to do, again, sometimes you want to have all this stuff just so you can kind of see where you are in this long lasting program. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to say print and we're going to say currently polling and then we're going to print or uh, paste out the stock, right? So whatever we're polling, it'll say what we're polling. And then we're going to do, this is going to be a very long line, so uh, stick with me, but and we will type it one more time at the end, but actually we'll just copy and paste it at the end. But what we're going to do is we're going to print out the string version, the strung out version of, and what it'll print out for us is a date stamp. Basically it'll say, you know, the, the day, month, year, and also the time. Um, but it's a very long line to do it, so I'm very sorry, but this is what we'll do. Um, so it's going to be date time dot date time dot from time stamp. And the time stamp that we're going to use is uh, time dot time. And let me make sure. I'm sorry, I just got to make sure we're doing this right. Time dot time. Okay, and then we want to do string, str. F time, so string from time, and then in here is how you kind of specify how you want that string to appear. 
I'll explain it as it goes, but it's not imperative that you understand this just yet, but this is kind of how you how the program will read timestamps. You'll see more of this when we go to plot stuff. But percent uppercase Y is the full year. A lowercase Y would just be the last two digits. Then percent lower M, I'm sorry, we want a dash. Then percent lowercase M, then percent a dash, percent lowercase D. Sorry, it's hard to talk and type this stuff out. So it'll be the full year, dash the month, dash the date, and it'll be numerical. And then percent H for hours, colon, percent minutes, or percent M for minutes, percent seconds. Ooh, okay. And then we want to close off this entire thing, and we're done. So what that's going to do is it's just going to print out um, what we're doing. So just, just, just to show you guys, we'll run this really quick. And so for each stock in this list, it's doing this. So it says currently pulling Apple, then it prints, you know, 2013, 825, and the timestamp, right? And it just ran through them all. So that's what it's going to look like. So now what we want to do is let's actually visit um, that URL. And darn it, I deleted it. So now we're going to have to type it out again, but that's okay. So URL to visit, if you want, you can maybe go back and maybe what I'll do to save you guys from typing it out is I'll, I'll put that in the description again. Uh, if I forget to put it in the description, someone comment and be like, you forgot to put it in the description and I'll add it. So URL to visit equals HTTP colon slash slash chartapi.finance.yahoo.com slash instrument slash 1.0 slash open parent or close the parentheses plus the strung out version of stock and then colon, or, uh, quote slash chart data semicolon type uh, equals quote semicolon range equals 10 day even though I think it only gives us five days uh, slash CSV close quotes ah take a breath anyway continuing on next thing we want to do is say uh, save file line or whatever we called it last time stock plus a dot txt Whew. okay now what we want to do is this program the first time we run this program it will there no file will exist but as time goes on we when we visit you know this link for chart api it's going to give us the full bit of information right like, it'll give us the last 10 days or five days. I think I really think it's five days. So I'm just going to say five days from now on. It's going to give us the last five days. But what if it's only been a day since we visited it, right? We only want the, the last, you know, since the last time we pulled data, we only want, like, the new data since then. So how can we, like, how can we work around that? Well, the way that we're going to do it is... We're going to have it, like, once we've already created the file, it's going to read that file, go to the last line, and since this is in Unix time, right, it's, it's a large integer, um, and since it's five-minute data, what we're going to do is we're just going to say if, uh, if, that, if the timestamp for this line is greater than the last timestamp we've had, then save it. That way we're not safe, like, because otherwise you'd get a very, very ugly data set and graph when you tried to graph that data, right? So you only want to pull the new data. So that's how we're going to do it. We're going to say, you know, if the timestamp for this data is greater than the last timestamp, then good, we'll save it. So the way that we're going to do that, normally we could just type that out. But, um, but what if, like, right now, for example, since we, we've deleted all of our files, we don't even have a file for this data and we shouldn't use the old file that we had because the date format is different. So since we don't have that, we should we should have some sort of fail safe just in case there's no file there that uh, you know even though we'll only in theory create the file once, we should definitely do it. So this is the last thing that we'll do before I think I'll cut off the video. I don't like to have the videos be super long. So we'll do that, and then we'll carry on in the next video uh, and finish up this program. So what we're going to want to have is a try and accept loop. Only this time, we don't really need it, because it, we're almost, for the first time we run it, we know it's going to fail, and we're kind of like building this into the program. Um, if something goes wrong, we can maybe build a debugger, but uh, for now, we're actually going to kind of abuse the try and accept loop. Anyway, so we're going to say read existing data. So, like, 
what we're going to first attempt to do, because 99.999% of this program's life, it's going to do this successfully. So we're going to try to do this first. But if there is no file, then it will do this next part. So really, probably an if-else statement would be superior here, but try and accept we'll do the same thing. So read existing data is going to be equal to open save file line. Um, and what we're going to want to do is read that file, or with the intention to read, and then we're going to actually read that file. So immediately, since there is no, this file doesn't exist yet, right? Like when we have append or write here, it actually creates the file for us. But when we have read, read does not write. That's kind of the purpose of read is you can't like manipulate the file, right? So you wouldn't corrupt something. Because if you do a lot of reading or if you do a lot of writing and appending, especially writing is really dangerous. Appending is kind of dangerous. You can still corrupt. Uh, but read is like a really safe way to open up a file and not have any worries. So anyway, um, immediately since this file doesn't exist, It'll, th it'll throw an exception, right? And we'll move to this exception part, but let's go ahead and finish this try loop. So if the file does indeed exist, what we'd wanna do is split existing, and that's gonna be equal to read existing data dot split, and we're gonna split this by a new line. Let me just make sure, because we don't really have any read existing data. I just wanna make sure I didn't typo anything. So if it does fail, it's gonna be kind of awkward at first. Um, anyway, continuing on, uh, most recent line is going to be equal to split existing. And if you're familiar with arrays, you might think that we want to put a minus one in here, right? So we go to the last line, right? Wrong. We actually want to go to the last, the second to last line. Because of the way that we're going to be writing to this file, it's going to, the file is always going to end with a blank line. So minus one of the array will actually be a blank line. Like it'll be the last line, but it's going to be blank and, and useless to us. So we actually want to do minus two. Then what we want to do is we want to say last Unix equals um, most recent line dot split by um, a comma. And we want the zero with element there. So let's see, do I have the API open anymore? I don't think I closed it on. Yeah, here it is. Cool. So as you can see, the zero when we it's gonna save lines like this, right? And the zero if element once we split, right, the first element will be this, right? So that's the, the timestamp basically. Just in just in case you were uh, following along. And then also what we can't what we ought to do I don't think it's necessary. I think it would automatically recognize it. Um, as I'm pretty sure it would recognize it as a um, an integer all right. Like you don't have to do it, but I guess, you know, to do things right, we ought to call this an int. So we'll go ahead and do that. And actually, let's make sure it really is an int if we're gonna call it an int. Um, Right, okay, so it has no decimals. So if you're pulling from something that has a Unix timestamp and it has like the Unix stamp dot and then like the millisecond kind of data, if you have that, then obviously you'll want to not use integer, you'd use float, but uh, it, it will do it for us. So that's it with our try. So if it can, it'll just, that'll be the last Unix timestamp and then we'll get to uh, the logic to use that. But if what will happen is since the file doesn't exist, it'll say try to do this. It's going to try to open the save line, which is this, the stock.txt, and it's going to fail if it doesn't already exist. So then we'll pop down to the accept, and what do we want to say for the exception? We'll just redefine the last Unix, and we're just going to say zero, right? Because we want to go at, like, if there doesn't exist a file, then we want the whole shebang. So um, that's all we'll do for the accept loop. So that's our logic, the pretty simple logic or kind of makeshift logic, but it, good enough, it will work. Um, so that's our logic for how we're going to find what the last time was that we, you know, updated this file. And what we're going to continue doing in the next video is going to be actually, you know, visiting the link, pulling the data, and then using, you know, this last timestamp um, to figure out what of that data we've just visited, we want to actually pull. 
So, um, so I'm going to stop the video here and uh, continue on in the next one. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support and your subscriptions. And until next time.